All right, guys, I did it again. I spent $600 on Pokemon cards. Again, as usual, it's kind of the norm nowadays. But as usual, I will make the joke that I have a problem and we will move on from there. This time though, there is a difference. It's not just any type of Pokemon cards. It's McDonald's Pokemon cards. Yes, sir. When I say McDonald's Pokemon cards, I do mean the cards that come with the $5 meal that includes a burger and fries. And I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are like, bro, that is not Stonks. That is not Mogul. You are a bad Pokemon card investor. You should just go play the TCG or something, which I will. I like the TCG. <laughs> On some real talk though, I've been trying to acquire a bunch of staple cards, just been putting it off. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. I spent $600 on McDonald's Pokemon cards. And honestly, I think it's probably one of the best purchases I have ever made. Not ever. It's one of my most recent purchases that is that I favor. It's one of my favorite most recent purchases. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, really dope purchase. I'm excited to share with you guys and let's just get into it. And when I say get into it, I mean to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There's so many classes to choose from, including music, photography, graphic design, and even economics and stock market investing. I've been taking the course called Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 with the instructor Jordi Vandeput. It's honestly helped me speed up my workflow so, so, so much. And I've put some cool edits that I think you guys will enjoy all thanks to this course. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And also don't forget the first 1000 people to click the link below will receive a free one month trial of the Skillshare premium membership. Anyways, let's talk about my bad financial decisions involving Pokemon cards. All right, so basically all I did is I went on eBay and bought out every non holo McDonald's Pokemon card I could find regardless of the price. Just kidding. There's literally nothing in here. This is totally empty. I did not buy that. <laughs> I am not a financial advisor, guys. I'm a noob. Here's the real stuff I bought. So I'll give you guys a good look. Watch. Check out the Pikachu right here. McDonald's right there. Let me point to it. See? Not clickbait. We are not a clickbait YouTube channel. We are pure factual. But yeah, so we got the Pikachu. We got the Charmander. We got the Larvitar. We got the Chikorita. We got the Squirtle. And we got the slow poke and then we got some damage counter things here right here all right really quick for those of you guys who didn't know these pokemon cards were released in 2002 in japan they came with every happy meal purchase for about a month or so and one booster pack came with six cards along with a set of damage counters typically each pack would contain three energies and three pokemon including one hollow of each and there's 18 cards in the set not including the energies so the set list includes Bulbasaur, Oddish, Chikorita, Charmander, Vulpix, Cyndaquil, Squirtle, Totodile, Meryl, Pikachu, Chinchou, Mareep, Abra, Slowpoke, Natu, Sandshrew, Fanpy, and Larvitar. Real quick, if you guys like those graphics, you should hit like, subscribe, comment. It really helps out with the algorithm. I really been trying to step up my YouTube editing game. So as you can tell, I put a little sauce in there for you guys. But yeah, I even got a ring light coming. I'm gonna try to figure out how to set up like my DSLR. Gonna try to step up with the quality of everything. So also maybe I might mix the audio too. We'll see what's up. But yeah, like and subscribe really quick. It really does help out the channel a lot. We're trying to get up in the algorithm. If you guys really wanna help the, out the channel, then slow everything down to 25X on YouTube and then let the video play and just chill it increases it's really funny but it makes the audience retention like 4x when it's 25x slowed down i learned it from a random thing that's just an aside anyways back to cards so we got all these six right here so this whole lot actually includes all six of the hollows from the set which is super dope honestly i'm so hyped and honestly these cards are really really clean too for the most part honestly five out of six of them i think are tenable and i do genuinely think maybe i could go for a black label on some of these i'll have to double check and go super into it but i'm going to talk about grading these and show you guys scans of the fronts and the backs all that stuff we're going to go in we're going to go going to go in with the math go in with all the data just talk about everything and talk about this whole process because i think this lot is honestly ridiculous for the price i paid I also think this is a really good example of something that I would showcase as a good buy 
there's a lot of factors that come into play that I think make this purchase really, really good in terms of the current market, in terms of the future market, et cetera, et cetera. And just in terms of condition, um, there's a lot of factors. So I really think this is a good learning opportunity for you guys. I think this is one of my better purchases in recent memory that wasn't just like a crazy steal. Like it wasn't just like, oh, like I bought this for a dollar and it's obviously like, this is a good buy. This is a buy that was a little bit risky, a little bit pricey. And there was a lot of factors into it, but the, at the end of the day, it turned out really good. So let's just get into it. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna talk to you guys about why I got into these cards. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just because of these two cards right here. And it's the Squirtle. Look at this Squirtle. The Squirtle got me into this set super hard. Just look at that art. And then, oh, you can see that little hollow swirl right there. We'll check, we'll look at the cards in more detail in a second, but it's this squirrel right here, and then this Charmander right here. See that, oh, you see that swirl right there too with the tail? But, so basically I got into these cards just because of these two cards and their specific artworks. I remember I was looking for these cards for a few months before I eventually got this lot. And I remember seeing the Squirtle and seeing the Charmander and just wanting both of them and just trying to search them online. I would sporadically just look at them every once in a while. They weren't super high on my list, but they were definitely getting there, if that makes any sense. And so I tried to hunt for the Squirtle for a long, long time. I couldn't find like a good copy. And I was like, oh, good copies go for like quite a bit. They go for like at least a couple hundred from what I realized. And even then messed up ones for more like a hundred but this was also during also during the peak peak of cards of pokemon and so i wasn't super aware of the changes in prices and same for the charmander i think i was looking for the charmander i almost bought a lp near mint one for about a hundred dollars it was pretty good it was like maybe it would get a nine it was probably a nine but it wasn't like guaranteed a nine, you know what I mean? So that was on bid for a hundred and I really wanted that, but I didn't bite on either. And then I actually ended up at Collecticon, someone offered me a PSA nine of this car for 500 and I, I almost did it. I was so tempted to do it because at the time, tens were going for around eight and then 500 seemed okay, but comps are going down. They're around like 300 now for nines. And so I'm glad I didn't bite the bullet but I was slowly, slowly obsessing over these more and more and more. And that's the point I'm trying to get at is you kind of just find cards that you really like and then you just slowly immerse yourself in the market and slowly immerse yourself in buying opportunities for them just to see what you can get. I'm really big on not just jumping into stuff and just slowly taking it all in, especially now as the market's still correcting itself. So you guys can kind of just see what you want see where prices are going, see what deals you can get on the card, and then eventually when the right deal comes up, you can bite on it instantly. So basically before I found this lot, I lost an auction for another McDonald's lot, except it had all the other comments and it was missing a few of the hollows. I think it was missing the Larvitar and maybe the Chikorita. I knew it had these three. But so basically it was missing the hollows and it had most of the commons. And so I remember that auction went up to around $700 or so. It went up to seven or eight. And I was like, uh, that's too much for me. I'm not trying to do this right now. And so I chilled on it. And then luckily for me, this auction popped up the next day. And I'm so glad this one came up instead. So basically for this lot though, there were only two pictures. And I was using a middleman and ordering it from Japan and I wasn't able to ask for more pictures, ask for clarification or anything. And so I just took the gamble. Watch, let me show you guys the pictures right now. All right, so here's the pictures of the fronts. And obviously you can't really see that much from the front pictures in my opinion. I always check the back pictures first. You just wanna check for obvious flaws in the front. And so I looked through all of them. They seemed pretty flawless in the pictures. As you can see right here, there's no crazy like frontal dings or anywhere a lot of times they're in these corners over here it's pretty obvious on the yellow and so that's the front of every card and I just overlooked that as much as I could just to make sure there was no crazy frontal damage all right so here's the back of the cards and from this picture I was like these cards are so clean I had so many people look over them I had Bex look over them I had Van look over them I just looked over it as many times as I could and almost I was in disbelief at how clean they were it just didn't seem plausible for them to be this clean I had a lot of doubt but also I feel like 
that's the situations where you come up is where you take those little gambles because you have to gamble into situations where other people aren't willing to risk it. But you also have to play it safe. And I think I play it safe in terms of the numbers game and we'll go over that in a second. But just look at them. We'll look at the pictures, we'll zoom in. They look really clean. Like there's no obvious glaring flaws. And then you see this right here. A lot of times with pictures, it's hard to tell whether it's the lighting or if it's the actual car that had whitening. But it, from the way I saw it here, it really seemed like it was the lighting, especially with like the weird camera angle they took it at with that bottom down angle kind of in a way. So it seemed like lighting to me and I just looked over these like I looked over as much as I could. Another tip too is you can put these in Photoshop and up the contrast and up the brightness and see if you see any crazy flaws or scratches. That really helps with that kind of thing. Just trust me, especially on hollow foil scratches, you can see the scratches so ridiculous. But yeah, so I looked over all of them. There's no flaws. I did realize right here, if you see this, this is the slow poke and the slow poke does have that bit of whitening and it has a little bit over here. You can't see the other spec, but that's pretty much it. Every other card is pretty much flawless. And you guys will see like once I show you guys each card by card. So now I'm just going to talk about everything I thought about before I purchased the lot. Balling out in cards is honestly one big math problem. You just want to make sure all the numbers are in your favor or at least as many as you can check off. So like I said, after fees and shipping and stuff, it was around $605, but I'm just rounding down to 600. So it's a nice even number for us to work with. And that's shipped and everything. Honestly, I was down to spend a little bit more. I mean, I was shook, but I was down to go even a little bit more, maybe even to seven, maybe eight, just depending on the mood. But 600 was a really nice number to end up at. And I, we're going to talk about how you guys can kind of determine what prices you should be willing to pay in a sec. So basically what I did is I just did the math on the money cards. And basically what that means is I just determined the prices and the worth of the most valuable cards. And I just worked my way down a little bit. So we'll start here and we'll check out the Pikachu. So from my knowledge of the Pikachu and the pictures we looked at earlier, I saw that it was pretty clean. There wasn't any issues with it on the back and so I'm just finding comparable ones and even looking at worse ones just so I can get a decent price point and so I'm gonna look at raw and then I'm gonna look at graded too and just so you guys know I'm gonna go over this fast when I normally do it I look at so many different copies and see the price points so I have a wider range of data but we'll just look at a couple I'm probably just gonna look at this one right here just give you a perspective and then we'll go from there but so my Pikachu is pretty clean I think it's a nine so we'll go with that just from the pictures from the other listing, I think it was a nine. So we'll go from there. And so I'm comparing it to this one right here. And so we look at this one. This one's already way more messed up. Mine has like no whitening. This one has a decent amount. It has whitening all across the bottom right, all across the bottom, all across the bottom left. Here, this is like a six. It's like a PSA six, a PSA seven. And so this one went for $75 shipped. So in a way, unless the Pikachu has a crazy defect that we don't, don't see coming, then I can confidently say that the floor of the Pikachu is at least $70. If not more, I would say it's worth around 100. So basically what I would do here is find a lot more comparable ones and just see how much it truly goes for. And I'm pretty sure on here, on eBay, I'm not gonna do the whole research thing right now. It's a lot of like time, but I would say confidently a Pikachu in the condition of mine would go for around 120, somewhere around there. I think 120 is safe to say, and I feel like I'm underestimating too. So that's that for the raw version. And then I'll go and check out and see how much it goes for graded. And I think it's a nine. I also want to be safe and check out eights. There's not a lot of eight comps, so we'll just see what's there. So here we got a 6.5 CGC went for $152. We got a 10 going for 100, 1100 thousand, or not 1100 thousand, 1100. And so that's the ceiling. That's how high it can go with just the Pikachu. And what else do we got? Uh, I think this is the same 6.5 got relisted. We got a 4.5 went for 100. So literally a PSA 4 will go for 100. So that means it's creased. So if yours is creased and you grade it you can still get a hundred dollars off it which isn't that bad we got a 10 for 900 
Here we go. We got a nine for 350. And then there's some more raw ones. This one for 130. Another 10 for this one went for 560. This one went for 15. So yeah, the, that gives you a perspective of the graded prices. And now we understand the raw prices too, which are 70 to like 120 ish. And then graded as a nine goes for 350. Tens go for a thousand. And so I would say eights probably go for, I could, I could see it going for like 200 and everything else is just kind of all over the place. All right, so we're just gonna pretend I did the research for the Charmander and the Squirtle just to save time, but they're all pretty much the same. The Charmander, the Squirtle, and the Pikachu are all roughly the same price. So PSA 10s all go for around 1K, I would say. Oh, you can't see that. PSA 10, 1K, it's around 800 to 1K. Bro, I'm so bad at this. There we go. So that's PSA 10s. Here, watch, we'll move that so you can see it. PSA 10s, 800 to 1K. And then PSA 9s go for around, I would say 300 to 400. That's about right. And then hecked up ones, or not hecked up ones, slightly worse ones than the ones I thought I was getting are around, I would say $100 to 120. So I definitely think you could get at least 100, 120, maybe even 150 for the minty, minty ones. So basically by looking at this, you can see that if I got 110 on any of the three, I'm in the green and the rest are all free for the most part. And then if I get any nines, if I could get just get two nines, then I even out and everything else is great. And then worst case scenario is everything sucks and I have to resell it all or something and I lose. I mean, the three big ones are still cover 300, which covers half already. And the Slowpoke, the Chikorita, and the Larvitar each probably go for like 50 bucks or something like that. I don't know off the top of my head, but that'd be like 450, so I'd lose 100 bucks, which isn't too bad. But that's also worst case, worst case scenario. So basically you can kind of see where a lot of buying lots and buying cards to grade and to sell and to keep and whatever and all that stuff is a lot of what ifs and just seeing as much as you can see and then risking as much as you're willing to risk for the most part. And in this situation you can basically see I'm risking what $150 at the most to possibly gain around if I got two tens, I would double up. Honestly, that's almost like tripling up. Yeah, around 800 to do 1,000. I would triple, or yeah, I would triple up. I would almost triple up if I got two tens on any of the three and the rest would just be free and there would be extra bonus cards. It's really hard to judge until you, you kind of have to develop the instincts for it and just do the math. If you do the math enough, you'll kind of figure it out and then you can kind of gauge grades and stuff after you grade more and after you sell more, you can gauge condition accordingly, according to pictures, you kind of gain an instinct for it, honestly. That pretty much sums it up for the most part and this is where you kind of determine your own margins for cards and how much you profit or how much you gain because at the end of the day, you decide how much you want to pay and there's always going to be lots where there's so many gaps in between the prices, so you just have to wait and see. And if the gap, like if the jackpot or like the general what you think you're gonna profit isn't enough for you to spend that much money, then don't do it. If there's too much risk to too little reward ratio, then it's not even worth it. But if it's very low risk and it's high reward, you should definitely run it. There's so many opportunities like that. I really think this is one example. And I will go over that in a second. I know I told you guys I would show you scans, but I have a couple more tips and I'll show you scans and I'll show you the cards and then we'll be done. Cause I know this video is getting pretty long. Tip one is check the sealed product. So with this there, it says 24 results for the Japanese booster pack of McDonald's, but there's less than that. Cause it's accounting for all the Aquapolis and Sky Ridge ones. I think all together there's like 10 listings. That's pretty much it. So there's 10 available and the price points are around 380. People are paying I was seeing sold around 330. So one pack goes for 330. So gauge what you're buying and how scarce its source is and judge accordingly. Like honestly, people are not gonna open a $300 pack. There's not gonna be that many more coming out. So getting be able to get all the hollows from this 
the, these packs, which would cost six of them, which would be like 1800. Uh, it's all this like convoluted math, but be able to get all six hollows from this pack for $600 versus buying two packs and probably getting nothing is definitely like goat mode. So just judge that accordingly. You can use that as a gauge of how you should buy into it or not. And it kind of gives you a gauge of its scarcity and how safe it is. Cause if there's a lot of sealed and like, I don't know, like, okay, like, yeah, Vivid Voltage Pikachu is a lot, the rainbow one, but there's so many packs available. There's gonna be so many more packs available. So there's gonna be so many more Vivid Voltage Pikachus available. But for other sealed things, people are not gonna open that stuff. It's too expensive to open now. So just something else, to, like something to keep in mind. And one last tip is just to check the population report. It's, it's pretty obvious, but check PSA pops, but also use this one website called pokemetrics.org. It's made by this dude at Pichu Collector on Instagram. He's the GOAT, honestly. But so what you can do is you can check over here and I pulled up the Pikachu pop report. So there's 400 graded, which is really low in perspective. Think about 400 graded. Yes, there's 310s, but if we go over here, so the past 52 weeks, there's been plus 50 tens added and there's been a hundred graded in total in the past year. So in the past week, there's been one graded and it's a PSA 10. And then the past month or so, there's been 30 graded. That's it. Really low and really scarce compared to other cards. So um, checking pop reports, checking the sealed product is just a good way to see how safe the card is like how prone it is to being oversaturated and yeah just use this it's a good tool do your research look it all up it's super super useful stuff all right lastly i know i said i would show you guys scans but it's too late for that so i'm just gonna show you guys bam look at this look at the squirtle look at how clean it is do you guys see that look at that swirl too there's like no hollow scratches on it it's honestly kind of ridiculous like I literally see none. Watch, I'm gonna see something crazy while we're here, but I don't see anything. So look at that. And then we'll go to the back too really quick. We're just gonna do it like this, you know? Get real up close and personal. But just look at that. It's literally pristine. Bam. And all the cards are like this too. Watch, I'll show you the big three. Charmander. so clean at first i thought those things on the left of him were hollow scratches but it, it actually just is part of the art and then you see the hollow swirl on his tail too so clean ridiculously clean honestly and then we'll go to the back i'm not going to take it out of the sleeve But just look at it it's like so flawless it's honestly so crazy like I honestly can't get over how clean these are like look at the surface too there's that little speck right there but I'm pretty sure I can just wipe those off flawless ridiculous honestly and then lastly pika clean ridiculously clean nothing also weird mini swirl next to the tail swirl question mark but yeah it's literally every card in this law is so clean the only messed up one is the slow poke and i'll show you guys that in a sec look at how clean that is i also did kind of notice a little bit of whitening on the charmander but it's so slight you have to be like really finicky to notice it so no bgs oh you see the swirl swirl action right all three of the big ones have swirls crazy cool and then here's the slow poke this is literally the worst damage on any of the cards you guys see that in the corner right there that's literally it I don't even know if you guys can even see it, honestly. It's, like, so hard to see. But there's, like, a little bit of whitening on the two edges, and that's it. That's the worst damage I could find on any of these cards, which is honestly so hectic.
but yeah that's my whole video it is very long thank you guys for staying with me if you guys stayed this long you guys are the goats as usual say what's up comment something comment anything honestly just help out the algorithm just tell me your cards tell me what cards you guys are gonna send out to grade or something that's always nice to know but yeah it was a good time talking about this I haven't been able to talk to any about like anyone about this it's hard to talk to people about Pokemon cards so I guess that's why YouTube is my outlet about it because I get hyped about this stuff but that's it like and subscribe comment and I'll see you guys in the next video whenever that happens.